for meaningful data it can be like useful useful data useful data yeah useful data okay so useful data is the first impression what next any any other impression we have about organized data organized data okay organized data is second thing third next what we can say information is something uh, which has some meaning in any context to receive right so here context is important term context is something very important right because the modern day information the modern day information retrieval or information processing is is some somehow dealing with this context part context part is now added context part is now considered the data itself right like in the social media platform we used to go to the profiles and we used to like the profiles like the post of other users so you're liking now you like simple click like even in the google search systems any search systems are observing your behavior so your behavior is a context right it is something beyond data your 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 uh, uh, any link or any uh, any web website link or any document that is data but uh, this this behavior user behavior on the data is is considered as a context so now uh, most of the system most of the organizations are trying to capture this context right you might you might have heard about the term called uh, uh, conversational ir like we are dealing with the or we are interacting with these uh, alexa siri all these systems so these are conversational ir right so conversational ir is entirely based on the context data they have they have this information uh, stored in their servers their repositories but what they are doing they are trying to capture user input as well as users intention user behavior so context is important right so whenever we have context plus data it is information right that is one one sub type one type of information what are the any any anyone we can we can have more answers how do you see information so we are saying it is organized yeah someone is trying to say yes information describes about entities information describe about entity okay what else it is not interesting okay let's go for next answer so we are trying to understand the basic notion basic uh, basic definition i mean layman definition right uh, okay anyone any 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 other student wants to say something about hello yes sir yes and uh, cn2 yes tell me yes sir sir extracting required knowledge from data is called uh, okay no, so knowledge we cannot we cannot use the term knowledge when we whenever we are trying to define information because there is hierarchy i hope you are familiar with the hierarchy first we have data then we can have information then we can have knowledge and at the last if possible if you can design a software system or a human being who can generate some wisdom because wisdom is something which is not available in the internet it it might available in the societies maybe in the civilization but it is not uh, wisdom is not available in the internet right so in the internet we can have uh, any details in these three labels one label is data so you can have various details in the form of data like images uh, you can have videos right and if you aggregate them we can have some details in the form of information and if you can further process you can have some details in the form of knowledge but uh, wisdom we cannot generate by using any 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 software systems right though we have these perceptions that there are some you know ai ml based systems which are generating wisdom so it is a mis misconception we are having okay further we can go uh, so uh, two questions are here very two questions which are important uh, first question is uh, can we have some properties like like in, in in computer science we used to talk uh, about the properties of something so can you tell me uh, the property of uh, or can you note down the properties of information similarly properties of data so if someone ask what is the what is the what are the property of data there is one part similarly can you tell me or can you note down the property of information properties of inf information right so because until unless you identify uh, until unless you are not able to uh, spot on or outline or highlight these properties of something can not distinguish between data and information two things because you you, you remember this fact data and information both represents to the same entity both represents to the same 
real life real world objects entity events anything right because the basic uh, uh, definition of information is nothing but it is a it is a processed data nothing that's it that's the basic or simplest uh, impression you have right so by only processing data uh, you cannot have a new details right you are simply processing it processing might give you the smaller size of details like in, like in our case like in your case actually when you have applied for the nit or when you have submitted your registration form you have submitted uh, maybe 20 30 details about yourself right so these 30 details are indicating or these 30 details are identifying you in the real life right but like you are identified by your name uh, in some cases you are you are identified by your email id in some cases you are identified by your parents name also your father name so that's why it, these these 20 30 details are used that you, you 30 30 details are being submitted into the system right so these 20 or 30 details are used to identify you in the real life in the real world but uh, but uh, in the system's point of view uh, to a information system uh, we are submitting these 20 30 details in the system so that we can create your impression inside the system bound right that's that's the first objective the first objective of data collection the objective of data is to identify you within a boundary within a within a system right in the real life you are existing but whenever we want to capture you inside the system we used to capture your impression in the system by using these 20 30 maybe 30 40 something details into the system right after capturing these details uh, either we can go by these 20 30 details all the time or we can process these 20 30 details and generate a smaller size of detail which is like roll number or maybe registration number right so uh, during the classes in the lectures i used to call by roll numbers so so student in the class are referred by roll numbers i can have approach like okay uh, i can call your name first name last name parents name pin 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 number email id all this i can call all these 30 40 details and refer to you or maybe i can go for calling by roll number so naturally the second approach where i am using the very small size of the tray as a roll number uh, is convenient for calling or referring to the real world object real world entity right so naturally whenever we are processing at this particular example whenever we are processing these 30 details to generate one single roll number it suffers or it uh, offers you two purposes first purpose is it is convenient to handle it is convenient to use second it provides some kind of summarized or small form of information it is easy to it is easy to keep this or refer this information to you right and third aspect is that whenever we are processing this definition is kind of a global perspective uh, whenever we are processing details whenever we are processing data it provides you some smaller size of detail which we are referring as a information so information uh, the third property of this processing is that whenever we are processing data and generating information it will be naturally summarized it will be naturally abstracted during this abstraction we are adding some uh, you know uh, validation or limitation also so you know something interesting about your roll number your roll number is uh, only valid for two years two years right that is one part second uh, your roll number is uh, valid or maybe authentic or maybe having importance within the institute premises it is having something related uh, uh, something correlation with institute existence so this is not only with this is not happening only with the roll number case so you can, if you if you can you can, you can see the row this passport number uh, aadhar number or any any unique id because unique ids are nothing but is it is the best example of information because we are generating these unique IDs by uh, submitting uh, maybe 100 of details about individual and generating one single small size of detail, abstract detail, right? So uh, you can observe this, 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 uh, this condition, this validation, this uh, validity boundary is always attached with each piece of information. So any system, any system in the universe, if it is generating information, 
it is if it is generating information by using data it will automatically add some kind of validation that this 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 information will be valid for four years 20 years or maybe lightroom also it is okay but it will add some geographical lim lim limitation or lower, you know validation also so it is not like that that one part of information will be valid for the lifetime or maybe it is valid for whole universe no that system will be generating these two limitations whenever we are processing data you need to define these two things right so uh, whenever we say okay what is the property of data whenever we say what is the property of information you should be thinking like that so whenever we are having set of data and whenever we are planning to apply some processing and deriving some information this processing itself is doing something to data and it is adding all these details which we have discussed it will be adding some validation limit it will be adding some kind of uh, abstraction also now you need to understand what is abstraction so text abstraction does not always means that it will reduce or minimize or maybe summarize or maybe information hiding something it is not like that right so can, so basically uh, abstraction is having two types so abstraction in a generic way uh, you can have uh, first abstraction is of nature uh, data abstraction uh, and second is of uh, procedural abstraction right so abstraction is important why it is important because whenever we are um, processing data whenever processing data the very first thing which we achieve after processing maybe data to information and information to knowledge so at each step actually we are achieving some level of abstraction so abstraction is a very very obvious process it is the internal process it is an implicit process you can say so in in the in the computer science domain so in any application or any system if you are designing in the if you are dealing with or if you are operating on the data and you are uh, applying some kind of processing this abstraction is implicit it will be happening right so uh, this data abstraction is very important so um, out of these two data out of these uh, data abstraction and procedural abstraction data abstraction is important to understand right so uh, let's understand what is data abstraction and what is procedural abstraction by simple example so data, data abstraction is something which we have just taken out that uh, by applying 20 different data uh, you can achieve a smaller size detail which we are referring as a information right so this is something data abstraction plain now what is procedural abstraction so procedural abstraction is something like uh, uh, in our houses uh, we used to get instruction like open the door close the door switch off the tv something like that so whenever we say open the door it is a procedure it is, it is something like instructional the statement we have made so when we say procedural abstraction it means when we say open the door to open the door you need you will be doing some internal tasks right you are going walking towards door you are rotating the knobs you will be dragging the door something like so there are three four sub steps involved but to achieve some kind of abstraction we are saying open the door simply right so this is something like uh, it is it is basically uh, 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 you know uh, hiding the sub task it is basically hiding subtract or maybe hiding the implementation details either hiding the implementation label tasks details right so to open the door you are performing three sub tasks but in the uh, in the abstract way we can say we are saying that okay open the door so it is having only single instruction uh, it is actually hiding it is actually summarizing or it is uh, actually not exposing the implementation tasks which are actually happening to achieve this single task right so uh, abstraction so this procedural abstraction is is basically implemented in uh, various programming languages by different uh, concepts of it so so particularly in the object oriented uh, we are having uh, uh, various conceptions various concepts which are achieving this procedural abstraction right so it is it is sometimes happening that we are uh, processing data and actually after processing data we, we will be having some processed or summarized data which we are referring as a information right so because this this uh, processing from data to information and information to data this is something very uh, important to understand because this whole theory of information retrieval and whole theory of web search is based on this processing 
right because uh, uh, when we will be discussing the internal processing internal uh, processing of uh, this information retrieval process inter information retrieval process big process uh, internally there will be various components which will be simply uh, you know uh, doing the reverse of this process from data to information so during this information retrieval process there will be some blocks some components which will be simply going backwards like information to data something like that so it is like a reverse of this process in which we are just talking about right so uh, these details will be uh, captured or maybe demonstrated in a detailed manner in the upcoming lectures right uh, because uh, uh, we will be uh, opening up about this topic called information retrieval and web search in, in in basically modular fashion one lecture will be focusing on one component uh, naturally that's the best way we can do second uh, uh, we will be actually uh, uh, taking care of two aspect one is information retrieval as a process second information retrieval as a system right so because uh, when we say information retrieval the very first impression we get as a search engine right so you can find out uh, the difference or maybe the possible analogy that uh, how information retrieval as a process is similar to search engine and how information retrieval as a system information retrieval as a system is similar to similar to search systems right that are, so there are very closest uh, closest uh, maybe say uh, analogous analogous terms and um, second thing is whenever we are talking about information retrieval uh, as a process and as a system uh, it is having i uh, know uh, applications in uh, you can say in most of the computer science uh, domains right like if you go for recommended system you will get some kind of uh, information retrieval process there if you go for image processing also you will get a type of information retrieval system there right so in in most of the computer science domain problems uh, or maybe situations we are having uh, uh, some kind of inherent or internally established information retrieval process right because information retrieval is primarily doing what it is simply it is simply breaking or it is simply uh, achieving uh, or pre processing the available in detail available information in a manner so that it can be further explored it can be further understood or it can be further analyzed right so it is basically a backward process or or, or you can say uh, uh, it is a re so we used to had a term called reengineering right so it is kind of that process only it is simply breaking the information into the form of data and once you get the data you can achieve anything right that's why nowadays uh, this term called big data big data analytics is happening right because we have gathered a huge amount of uh, data or maybe information that we are not able to uh, generate or we are not able to process it to achieve as a form of information right so because we have just started this lecture uh, by having the term of uh, information and data and then their correlation but now you can see uh, no one is talking about information analytics I means most of the systems most of the uh, the researchers are talking about big data analytics now so because it is it is quite confusing also sometimes because uh, we used to talk about data information and knowledge but in the modern at least from the last 5 to 6 years each and every individual is talking about big data analytics right so so eventually each and every system is working uh, working on the on the uh, data level details but in some cases you need to generate that information from the data right so we have partly talked about the problem, how we are getting these relations from data to information and how we can identify the properties of information how we can identify the properties of data so partly we have taken the very first question now uh, uh, let's take this uh, let's take this question uh, that uh, what do you think why why uh, why uh, what is the role of database system so can you tell me so what is the role of database system right i'm talking about database systems right so can you tell me what is the role of database system 
Yeah, anyone? So any student can respond to the question. What 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 is the role of database system? Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, database system is uh, mainly uh, targeting to store uh, organ store the data in an organized manner so that when required, it can be fetched the data in uh, more optimized way. And uh, when required, it can be stored data um, at, uh, in a more optimized way so that it can be uh, more uh, operational friendly. Okay, so optimization is something uh, you talked about. Okay, so uh, data uh, naturally we have we have uh, some impression about this term data, and uh, naturally we will be collecting this data. That is second thing, and third thing is uh, why it is important to uh, collect this data and keep in a organized way or maybe uh, structured way, right? how this organization of data into a structure or into a optimized manner storage is important right uh, but that is not the purpose of database system right i'm telling you very clearly that database system is designed for different purpose okay can you get uh, other answers uh, yeah so you can uh, you can respond any any student can respond to the question so sharing of data the concurrency of data okay next any 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 answer uh, organized collection of uh, structured data and which is can be used to access the data remotely okay so we have a uh, organized collection of data or structured data okay and the, any other answer to infer something out of data infer something from data okay it is not the task of data system okay next so i think uh, to maintain integrity type property integrity, of yeah that's that's the reason okay that's that is something yes, we are getting as a as a result of using database system right yes sir okay so uh, let's take this definition we have around we have 20 minutes for that so let's take this definition of three things first we have already discussed the data now now naturally we have data so it can be of anything it can be of a student data it can be of uh, patient data it can be of any it can be about anything right so data is something it is it is available in in unprocessed manner so uh, anything which is not processed anything which is in the form of uh, molecules you can say right you, you like your name you like your name is atomic it cannot be baked further if you if you split your name it will lose the meaning it can by splitting your name uh, you cannot refer you. I mean, anyone cannot refer you. So, uh, the the very first property of data is something. It is always in the atomic manner, right? It is always in the state of atomic. Cannot further break it down. So, I, I think that's the property of data base. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I think that is the that is the property of first normal form also. So, I I hope you remember this factor that first normal form first normal form says. Uh, each and every cell should have atomic data. That's what the first normal form data normalization says. And that is the property, uh, that is the property of data also. So whenever any question is raised to you that, okay, can you tell me the property of data? You can immediately say, so data is something which is not processed. That is one part. Second, data is something which is, uh, which is uh, in the state of atomicity. It is atomic in the nature. Each and every detail uh, which is available in the data is in the atomic form. Your name, your first name, your last name, actually, your parents' name, then your address, then you have your email ID, then you have contact number. So these are the atomic things. You cannot break these details. If you break these details, they will lose their meaning, right? So with this impression that data is something which is not processed, any detail which is not processed, any 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 detail which is in the form of raw facts. So sometimes in the books or maybe in the internet sources, it is referred as it is uh, raw fact is data is nothing it is a raw profit but i say it is an unprocessed detail it is an unprocessed detail about about any real world entity it is about any real world entity entity means objects real world objects it might be an individual it might be an institution it might be a transaction also right so anything which is happening in the real world can be captured right so these these things are captured into the system by using their details right 
So the first term is quite clear to us that data is something which is not processed, which is available in the atomic way manner. Uh, and, and after that, after that, if we observe that any we have capsule or details about the real world entity, certain real world entity, now you have to gather it into a into a collection form, right? So if you gather all these details and store in a store in a, a structured manner, you can say that is database. I'm saying database, not I'm not I'm saying I'm not saying database system or maybe database management system, I'm not saying that. Database is something, it is a collection, simple collection, right? I'm not saying organized. I'm not saying related. I'm not saying any other thing. So I'm saying database is a collection of data. So that's it. So if I want to manage the results of or maybe the attendance sheet of your class, I will be collecting your roll number, your name. That's it, right? Uh, that's the that's the that's the basic example of it, right? Collecting all the details and keeping into us into a uh, any storage or any any in template that could be a database. But this will not serve the purpose of the further task, right? So you need to define some kind of uh, organization or you need to define some kind of relationship right relationship between relationship between these details so if i have captured three details like roll number name and your phone numbers sometimes these details will not be sufficient right sufficient to what sufficient to what it is the main property i'm talking about sufficient to identify sufficient to identify each row each row uniquely right so why we are doing this uniqueness thing and why you're talking about the relation thing something like that so that's why we need that's why so you you have collected all the data and kept into one database that's the very first task you are doing you will be doing second task is you need to you need to apply some kind of structure some kind of management some kind of property to identify each row because each row indicates to a one real world object each row each row indicates to a one student of the class right so how you will be ensuring it in our case we are using roll number already right so if you remove the roll number if you collect all the records of a student except roll number you will not be able to identify you will not able to identify each row each row by unique way you cannot claim that that's to these two rows are these these two rows are indicating towards two different students and that's why we need a property of uniqueness so database system database system is so very first task of database system is to impose this property of uniqueness right property of uniqueness means uh, it will be having some mechanism database system will be applying some mechanism based on which the data system can database system can identify each row as a unique and for that it is applying what constraints so correctly you have identified so database system will impose this primary key that is the primarily used primary key any it can declare any attribute as a primary key and claim that at least because of this particular column, because of this column, which we are saying as a primary key, each row is unique now. Now, example in your class. So suppose there are two or two students. Uh, suppose both are siblings, uh, siblings and both are twins, let's say. So initially, if we collect the data, they, sometimes it has happened that uh, two students are two, two, two close uh, tuples are having similar names. They will be having similar father name. They will be having similar parents uh, address. They will be having similar phone numbers also initially. So in in a huge databases like so in maybe in the class in, in in this example of student student details it is not happening. But in the case of millions of data sets, uh, exceptionally it is possible that two records are having two call two rows are having almost all the details similar, right? 
So to prevent to prevent this scenario, we need to insert we need to insert uh, this property of uniqueness. So the very first objective of the database system is to impose as uh, to or maybe to uh, define a property of uniqueness. And by using constraints, constraints like primary key, unique, not null, check, constraint, check, and default, or maybe foreign key also, you can define a property of uniqueness on the database, which we have collected, which we have uh, achieved by collecting the data sets, data set or maybe data objects. Right, so, so the very first objective of database system is to apply this, this property of uniqueness by constraints, and once you apply, once you apply this, these constraints, you can claim, and you can say that now uh, data is having some relation. Data is related. Whatever data we have captured in the database is related because related because now each and every row is unique, and each and every row is indicating to a one single real world object, real world student. So each of the details shown in the first row are related to each other. This first name in the very first, if you see the first row in the database, first value is related to the name of the student. Second value, which is row number, it is related to the very first student. Uh, this email ID is related to the very first row. So each and every detail, each and every value in the first call, uh, first row is related to a student, right? So primarily what is happening, uh, this database system is imposing constraint to achieve uniqueness, but it will also give you this property of relatedness, right? So database system is naturally achieving this. And once you achieve this, your task of data retrieval, your task of data management, your task of any other thing, any other activity becomes easier, right? It does not mean by having primary key, your retrieval will be easy because primary key is not being used for retrieval. That, that is again a, a misconception students are having. Primary key constraint is used to impose some kind of uniqueness on the database. For the retrieval purpose, you will have other keys. Other keys like you are having, you will be having candidate keys, super keys, right? That is the role of, uh, that is the role of, uh, Candidate key, that is the purpose of candidate key and super keys, right? It is primarily used to perform uh, normalization, right? And normalization we are performing to with the objective that the data will be database will be having lesser redundant and lesser dispersible situations, right? So primarily candidate key is used to, to serve some kind of uh, uh, some kind of help in the retrieval step, retrieval step, right? So whenever we will be getting query queries from the user uh, in the background, in the background system will be utilizing these candidate keys to effectively or to efficiently extract the data from the database, right? So we have discussed these these different aspects in a very uh, abstract way. Now you can tell me what is the role of data model? Why we are using or we are discussing data models uh, in the engineering courses, like during the maybe database system uh, theoretical discussions in during your uh, bachelor's, you will be having this term called data model. So what is the purpose of data model? Why we are talking about data model? Yeah, tell me, Any, anyone can answer this question? Yeah, so I'm waiting for your answers. You can tell me uh, like what is the purpose of data model? Why data models are uh, so important? Yes, please tell me. For organizing uh, data set or entities. Data set entity. Okay, next, what is the possible thing we can have? Yes, tell me. What could be the next answer for uh, this? Why we do we do, why uh, uh, do we need data models? Why we are having this importance of data model in the database system? So, with the help of data models, we can easily understand the data. Yes, please tell me. 
okay logical view of that okay so it is something related answer view you're talking about views okay next answer why do we need data models why data models are uh, important to 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 be discussed or to be have in the life of database system so with the help of data model we can easily analyze our data okay um, analyze our data so it is it is it is naturally related to the uh, correct answer right uh, analyzing it will be naturally if you adopt some data model it will help you to analyze the data efficiently but my question is different my question was why the data models are important and why they are required yes please go ahead and any, any answer um said to define a relationship between datas different data uh, different data means what we are having same data i mean why you are having this impression that we have different data any other any other answer we have different data might okay you might have some impression different data okay okay so let's break down this term called data model so we let's let's do not take term data let's understand term model so what is the in a, a very generic or maybe in the very basic uh, representation uh, what do you see why what what this term the model means so the, the the way we understood as far as in the computer science background or in the computer science domain a uh, model is is it is a, a representation right it is a outline it is an impression it is a print imprint i mean there are various terms you can use from the english literature but it is not a actual product that is for sure but it is uh, it is the impression of that we used to take a very generic term called prototype so prototype of anything can be called as a model it is not true prototype is a physical product it cannot be the final product like in, in uh, the software engineering course you might have uh, you might have uh, studies this model called uh, prototyping model and there are other models also process models so in case of prototyping model we used to create a prototype uh, maybe prototype means it is a working product but it not it will not having it will not be having all the features so prototype is a product with the limited features right so that user can have uh, some kind of use and use and feel something like that the objective of prototyping is to give you the actual uh, experience of the product maybe with limited features right so we cannot say that uh, model is a prototype it is for sure so model is is a, it is a a uh, uh, representation representation or maybe sometimes it is it is said as a conceptual representation it is sometimes it is said is a logical uh, uh, logical impression a log logical uh, representation so now as a computer science student you need to have this clarity that uh, if someone says uh, between this conceptual model and between this logical data logical model uh, let's take these two terms conceptual modeling and logical modeling so can you tell me this ear diagram in the database when we draw the ear diagram entity relationship diagram uh, between conceptual and logical which type of diagram is erd diagram can you tell me whether it is conceptual or logical yes tell me please sub conceptual conceptual why it is conceptual because uh, here we just uh, conceptually uh, we defined how each and every data are related to each other yeah so in the conceptual diagram we are not talking we are not talking about uh, the data right that is that should be very clear to you if you can carefully observe in the case of er diagram which you are saying is a conceptual diagram conceptual model of your database it is not talking about data it is talking about entities and their attributes yes, yes, right yes, so uh, so conceptual model so now let's take uh, this definition or maybe this impression that conceptual modeling of anything like like we used to talk about this term concept theory concept kaise mere concept kaise concept is something 
it is a very first impression about anything right now we are like, like we are in, we are having this lecture and naturally aapko kuch concept rahe honge so prior to this lecture you might have some impression about some uh, technical concept now we are updating those concepts so concept is something uh, is as a first impression about anything first understanding about anything and later on you can update it also so you can always kehte na ki you can always uh, update your first impression also so you cannot say that first impression is the last impression it is a bad strategy so now you need to update that first impression and make it impression 1.1 something like that right so very in a very uh, basic way you can say conceptual model conceptual diagram conceptual uh, uh, modeling it is something it is deriving a very first understanding about input right like in in case of data design whenever you are going for database design or whenever you are going for software design you used to capture the requirements from the user from the client from the business user and document those requirements into the srs and then in the srs sometimes you used to draw these diagrams like erd dfd all these things so instead of having the requirements in textual manner you can represent these textual manners in some kind of diagrammatic or visual representation so these erd dfds are the first impression first impression about the requirements that's why these are called conceptual diagrams that is very, that is very clear so conceptual diagram or conceptual modeling is something it is a very first impression of the system of the system that in the in the erd particularly which is a conceptual representation of database it indicates the possible entities it indicates the possible attributes it indicates the possible primary key but it is not indicating the foreign key if you can observe carefully observe that in a er diagram we will not find any foreign key things because it is foreign keys for some other purpose right so in the er diagram we capture entities attributes foreign primary keys uh, there are different types of attributes relationship relationship ratio right that's what we used to say ms2 and 1s2 m something like that but but if you go further if you go further means if you create or identify the logical model logical model is what logical model is again an impression it is again a representation of the same requirement same data requirement but logical modeling or logical model is something which we can implement which we can design which we can actually create right so after er diagram you map these er diagrams into the form of table representation like okay table will have these uh, attributes are primary key uh, it will have these data types and and between two tables if there is a it, between two entities in the er diagram if there is a, a relationship with some ratio you use we used to implement this relationship via foreign key right so foreign key is it is not important in the er diagram but it is important in the logical implementation logical designing because it is uh, implementing this uh, aspect called relationship in the er diagram right so uh, you can see here you can see here in the case of conceptual we are not talking about data we are talking about some understanding of information which is given by client and we are trying to model we are trying to represent these requirements given by clients in some form of diagram right so conceptual modeling is nothing it is it is it is never talks about it will never talk about the data thing data thing data means actual data which will be coming into the system in the later on in the later stages it is simply capturing all the possible requirements coming from the user but when we say logical data modeling logical modeling is about it it is about creating the actual entity it is talking about the actual product which will be implemented which will be designed it means it should talk about data and that's why and that's why we are talking about these constraints we are called creating foreign key we are creating not null check default all these thing in the logical logical model right so 
so model is so now model is in the present representation so in this modeling or in this data modeling we are saying we have two stages conceptual and conceptual and logical logical the purpose of logical modeling is one conceptual is one but both are both conceptual and logical both are representing or indicating towards the same data requirement right so this is for clear thing now we are talking about data model right data model why data model is important so you need to take care of two things whenever talk whenever we are talking about data modeling data modeling says uh, like in case of ear diagram we have observed all the requirements and captured or represented in a way by using ear diagram and then we have mapped this ear diagram into the logical representation there we have designed all the constraints so that in the future data will be arranged data will be received to the database system in a in a manner it cannot be happening in in a, in a chaos manner right so the purpose of logical data modeling is different now what is the overall objective of data model so we have two impressions conceptual and data log logical data modeling so you can say the purpose of data model right so because we have six or seven types of data model and relational data model is one of the data model we have as a, in our impressions that it is applying primary key it is applying for so this is something coming from the relational data model like in case of network data model you cannot have primary key in case of hierarchical data model you cannot have this primary key or foreign key things in case of object oriented data model you have different implications so basically uh, these constraints these organization of data is controlled by data model right so we have somehow missed the relationship but after getting database so we have data we have collected these data into the database after collecting the database you need to carefully select the data model right because it is equivalent to the selection of process model in the software engineering right after collecting the requirements you need to carefully select the process model whether we will be going for waterfall prototype spiral red spiral or anything conventional incremental anything so it is it is equivalent or analogous to the stage of selection of process model so after collecting the data records into the database somehow now after collecting the database you need to concern about how our users will be operating on this database what is the possible challenges our database will be having you should be carefully selecting the data model right and once you select the data model once you select the data model and say okay for my database uh, relational data model is the perfect and naturally once you select the database uh, or data model it will apply those conditions so like for relational data model if you adapt relational data model it will automatically achieve or implement these constraint things to achieve uniqueness right so it is not a generic or a, a global rule that each and every data model is having same constraint type same constraint things to achieve uniqueness naturally the very first stage the very first stage after getting the database the very first step to implement this property of uniqueness but each data model will have their own way to implement this uh, property of uniqueness in case of relational data model you have primary key constraint all these things but in other data model it will have different right so this this adaptation of data model on the database changes everything right agar aapne relational data model se adapt kiya it will have different implication it will have different setups for each and everything you will have rdbms you will have rdb something like that so it, everything will become relational relational database relational database management system each and everything is true if you adapt uh, a network data model it will it will be having different story then after that so naturally so how you will be deciding that which data model will be sufficient or which data model will be appropriate for your database so there is a role of there is a role of data type right so we have observed probably the last thing we are discussing today we have observed that we have got three types of data right one is called structured second is called unstructured and third is called semi structured so we have two extreme structured is one way and unstructured is the second extreme and in between we have semi structured right and 
you need to understand uh, this question is for you only why we are saying a data is unstructured why we are saying a data is semi structure why we are saying a data is a structure so again this classification this nomenclature depends on the nature of the data with respect to the storage capacity right maybe 30 years uh, from here maybe 1980s or 19 uh, late 80s uh, most of the data we captured it is it is to be in the form of structure means each and everything is atomic like nowadays we are having student details their results and all these things those days maybe 30 40 years back uh, it was really possible that we can capture an image we can capture a pdf we can capture the text documents it was really happens so most of the data those times most of the data was in the form of atomic form so atomic means you can you can have these details separately right and you can organize these details in a in a, in, a, in a kind of uh, uh, sales manner or in maybe separated fields right so that's why uh, by having this nature of data in the earliest days they have designed they have designed they have created each and every storage i'm talking about storage each and every uh, storage devices are each and every storage devices are designed or manufactured to 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 adaptable for the structured data right so that's why uh, most of the databases on those uses are designed uh, to support or compatible to the structured data right so now you can see uh, so we have the same impression so most of the devices has been designed to uh, to easily store the structured data right uh, but down the line means maybe you can take that window of last 10 years uh, particularly from the evolution of social media platforms we are getting we are getting different type of data uh, populated or generated by the users in the internet in the scale of petabytes something like that so nowadays after 30 years from that 80s or 40 years from the 80s we have different extremes those days 96 percent of data is of nature structured so the hardware or storage devices are designed to store that in the compatible way but now we have reached to the different extremes the 98 or 97 percent data generated is of nature unstructured why it is unstructured because it is not compatible to the storage devices and these storage devices are designed with the impression of earlier data so now we are getting different data which is not easily easily stored in these devices to store these data which we are generating in the social media platform or maybe any sensor uh, it is uh, it is not easily fitting into this databases storage devices so we are applying some kind of pre processing and then storing it into it right so it is unstructured uh, data which is now uh, dominating dominating in the internet or maybe any forms right so before going for the uh, selection of proper data model you need to see the nature of data which you are getting and based on that only you can select the data model right because data model controls two two things this is the probably last point we are making data model is controlling two points first how data will be stored right how data will be stored that is one part second part how data will be represented to the user data model is controlling only two aspect of a database how data will be stored and how data will be represented right so that's what the two things data model is controlling it is having important uh, role particularly to the life of data because it is each and everything on the data will be controlled by data model so it is very important to correctly select that appropriate data model for your data or maybe database right so this is the last uh, thing which we have taken now uh, with this uh, i'm uh, probably closing